Hello once again Silly Cows, Nick here from Silly Cow Gaming and today I have a nice little loadout video for my Mosquito in Planetside 2. Now this loadout will apply to all of your Empire's Empire Specific Fighter or ESF for short which is what I'll be referring to in this video and it's really good for air to ground combat. Now this loadout there will be different weapon names for different factions but like I said before there is an equivalent for each faction which you can easily locate um, in your certifications and or uh, station cache menu. Now for me, this is a very popular loadout I've seen on the field in Planet Side 2. It's really great for air to ground combat, but for some people it might not be the best. So I urge you to try and experiment in the VR training area to try and figure out what works best for you. Personally this loadout is one of the best for me, but I do know why others use different things and I am going to acknowledge that later in the video. If you want to hear what adjustments you should or might make, go ahead and stay till the end of the video. But right now I'm giving you a basic loadout that a lot of people like to use, particularly me. And I will go on to those of you who have a different playstyle, I'll be able to explain to you how you can go to that advantage on the battlefield later in that video. But for now I'm going to go ahead and talk about mine. So this loadout is going to cost you somewhere around 2,000 certs, uh, somewhere around 2,000 station cash as well in that case, uh, or 1,000 station cash for the weapons, and a good 1,000 certs for the certification points. Now I'm going to give you the basics and right now I'm using mostly tier 1 certifications but I do suggest upgrading over time on certain ones. Um, but in this video I'm just going to be using the tier 1s and you're going to see how effective they are on the field. And I'm not the best pilot but I do thrive in certain situations especially with this loadout. A skilled pilot will do absolutely amazing on the battlefield with this loadout but they might have to adjust it for themselves. Your playstyle will definitely change how this loadout will work for you. So now instead of me telling you how much you need to focus on your loadout and what faction you're on and stuff like that I'm just gonna go in and get straight into loadout but do remember during the whole video this is not necessary for air to ground combat it just works best for a lot of people start off I'm gonna give you the weapons for the Terran Republic the Banshee is the primary that I use for my air to ground combat it has a splash damage which really does help on the battlefield especially when you're taking out infantry and the splash damage is actually very significant and I have noticed that it will help me with that, taking out infantry but at the same time when I hit the infantry it still packs a huge punch the reason why I choose this over the rotary is because of the splash damage in particular the rotary does do more damage so if you do have better aim I do suggest the rotary now it does have less bullet velocity and a very low bullet um, firing rate for making air to air combat very difficult as well as leading your targets but if you're taking out in a giant battle and you just want to do a quick flyover go ahead and fly over them with the banshee and you'll be able to take out a lot of guys. The other nice thing about the banshee is when you're using your secondary which I prefer to be the hellfire in this case, nice transition there. Um, if you run out of ammo on your Hellfire, go and switch to your Banshee to finish off your infantry targets who are being really stubborn. Because of the splash damage on both of those, you're really effective against infantry and pretty good against armor. The Hellfire Rock parts might not be the best choice for you, but I do suggest getting some ammo capacity and um, thermal optics because night vision optics have been nerfed recently because this will allow you to be able to spot out your targets better and be able to take them out for a lot longer time without having to go to a reload station. I have invested a couple certs into ammo capacity on my Hellfire, and only one on my Banshee, and I also use a zoom on my Banshee, which I just prefer for more accuracy at range, so I don't have to get too close to the flak, but at the same time, I completely understand if you're pulling off a thermal optic on your Banshee as well, because it is a very viable tactic that a lot of people do enjoy to use as well. Now for your secondary on your Hellfire, you might also, instead of your Hellfire, you might choose to go with Afterburners, which are the default weapon, but they're default secondary at least, which are extremely useful though, and are quite underestimated. If you're using the Banshee and or the Rotary, because you might have better aim than me, you will be more effective most likely with a Racer High Speed Airframe and a Afterburners, but we'll get to that later in the video. Now for the certification points. For the defensive slot, I use Nana Auto Repair Tier 1, but I do suggest upgrading it over time so you repair a lot faster and sooner. The reason why I use this is because when I'm usually using an air to ground combat, I have a lot of time to strike, pull out, get to a safe location, and then repair up. When you're going into combat air to air, I do understand a bit more on the composite side because you are going to be taking damage and you, when you land you, to repair, you usually have time. It's not like you're escaping and your enemy just decides to go off. Usually air to air combat does involve tunnel vision when it comes to your enemy chasing you. I also use hover airframe 2 and I'm considering going to 3 because I do like hovering and taking out my targets, but I do understand why people use racer high speed airframes for nosediving. 
I also do use fire suppression as my utility slot to extinguish any fire that I'll be having and to increase my health almost halfway whenever I'm in an extremely sticky situation that I just got out of in air to ground combat. Commonly this will happen with flak attacking me and I start to burn up. I after burner my way out and use my fire suppression and I'm usually in the clear for repair. My nanite auto repairs use tends to kick in on my way to where I'm going to start repairing so I will have enough in case I land a little bit harshly, harshly that I'll be able to repair up in time. Now, like I said, my loadout is Hellfire with the Banshee, so I can take out my air-to-ground targets, Hover Airframe 2, and Fire Suppression, as well as 9 Eye Auto Repair. I do say that this is the best loadout for me and many other pilots. However, right now I'm going to start getting to specifics on how you can be better at air-to-ground combat. One loadout I tend to see a lot is the same thing for all of this except a Racer High Speed Airframe and Composite Armor. The reason why I see this a lot is because people like to nosedive and take out only infantry. A lot of people don't like to focus on tanks, which Hellfire is extremely useful for. If you can hit a tank in the back with your Hellfire missiles, you'll be able to take out any tank, which is usually common against Skyguard. What I tend to do is if I ever do pull on a Racer high speed airframe, I'm usually on the continent of Amherst, where tanks are very scarce and if people are pulling them, they're very stationed and I don't have to worry about them. Usually I have heavy assaults on the ground who are taking them out while I'm doing the job of taking out the infantry who could be taking out the heavy assaults. It's very well balanced on helping your ground troopers by taking out air to ground troop by taking out ground troopers with your aircraft. Now I do also see why people use composite armor because they do like taking less damage and they can always land to repair if they plan on doing it another time. But at the same time I just like having that 9 auto repair and composite armor really has not done much for me because I do not plan on investing too much into it. Also people like to use flares if they get locked on a lot and all this can be avoided if you have careful positioning and flying. Usually if you fly low or fly really high you won't be locked on as much. Usually the mid grounds around 300 to 700 meters in the air, in the air um, that is the common zone where aircrafts fly and where lock ons are usually paying attention. So if you fly low you will be hit by a lot more flak so you need it to, it really just depends on the situation. This is why I understand why people use composite, racer and flares is if they get locked on and if they take a lot of damage and if they want to get out of the situation quickly but if you know what you're doing you can handle with the situation with the loadout that I gave you before eventually later in this channel I will be making a scout uh, scout aircraft loadout this involves me running with a racer high speed airframe afterburners and a banshee this will be so I can take out infantry at the same time have scout radar which will be the other attachment on it, to allow my infantry on the ground to be able to see where all the targets are. This is going to be really useful hopefully eventually, but uh, I'm not quite finished with the loadout myself, so I just want to see where it's going and maybe I will make a video on it. But me personally, I prefer hover frame over racer high speed for now, and I really do like how my loadout works. It's really efficient on the field if I am doing good piloting at that time, but uh, sometimes it's not the best. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you really enjoyed it and favorite it, comment below, give me a feedback you have. Let me know what loadouts you want me to do next time. Subscribe if you already have not, and I'll see you guys in the next video.